Our next guest warns the end of summer could be a bummer. Mm. The Fed's doves are getting more vocal. Job growth is hitting a brick wall and GDP is doing something it has never done without a recession following close behind. Rosenberg Research founder David Rosenberg joins us now with more on why September could lead into a winter of discontent. David, great to have you with us. It seems like everybody and their brothers have given up uh, the call for a recession. They've gone into the soft landing, no landing campaign. Here you are, you're saying recession is still on the horizon. Why are you so still firm and steadfast in this call? Well, look, you know, it's, I, I've been in this business for 40 years and I think I've seen it all, or close to seeing it all. And you know, the same consensus that you're talking about was calling for a soft landing uh, all the way into the summer of 2008. Uh, and the recession began in December of 07. So uh, I think it's just human nature. You know, you had a nice counter trend rally in the stock market this year, and all of a sudden everybody thinks they have to fit their economic narrative uh, into what the stock market is doing. Um, but the major point I'm gonna make is that the recession uh, has been delayed, you could say, but it certainly has not been derailed. And what kept the Energizer Bunny going this year, and that's what I refer to the US consumer as the Energizer Bunny, uh, is that well, we had the uh, the excess savings file uh, was real, and everybody seemed to spend all $2.2 trillion. I mean, some of it early on was used to pay down debt, but almost all that money uh, was used for spending, and it continued right up until now. Uh, to me, what's really important is the San Fran Fed, and I think that they actually produced the best research, uh, showed that um, the batteries for the Energizer Bunny in terms of the excess savings being put to work in the economy expire at the end of September. And we know that uh, we're going to have the impact of the student loan, uh, the debt relief uh, program uh, terming out, staring us in the face. And so all these stimulative measures uh, from the fiscal side subside, but what we haven't seen the full impact yet is what the Fed has done in terms of the economy resetting uh, to this huge increase in interest rates since the beginning of 2022. Those lags still stare us in the face. And you're seeing the strains already, Melissa. I mean, look at where consumer delinquency rates are going. That was one of the big themes. Nobody talked about it uh, on what the retailers are saying. Uh, the retailers are seeing their department store credit card loan uh, delinquency rates are rising inexorably. Uh, the bank-wide data that just came out for the last quarter, we've gone up a percentage point in the past year to 2.8% on delinquency rates on credit cards uh, and 20 percent of the consumption growth in the past year was funded by credit cards over and beyond what the lagged impact of the fiscal stimulus did so i think we're going to be in for some very challenging times for the 70 percent chunk of the economy called the consumer and i think that was one of the telling i think aspects of what almost every retailer had to say in the past week is the is the negative guidance that to me really stood out Rosie, the bull case, and the bulls will say, well, wait a second, the, the U.S. consumer, in terms of his or her home, had ample time to refinance. Most of them did, so the interest rate move doesn't really have the same effect that it would if it, you know, in a different cycle. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think that um, th that's a very static, uh, I would say, economists would call it a partial equilibrium look at the economy, uh, that they say that uh, all these homeowners have locked in and they're not gonna suffer any debt service impairment. Uh, for one thing, that much is true of the mortgage side, but a lot of the non-mortgage debt, and remember consumer credit cards roll over almost immediately. Uh, you know, that's over a trillion dollars now of outstandings. Um, that's, a, um, that's a red flag. So you're right on the mortgages, uh, but there's other forms of consumer loans. But at the same time, the big impact is gonna be what interest rates do to business investment. Once again, everybody says, well, look at the corporate sector. They've all termed out their debt too. Nothing to worry about. No, Ma, they basically termed out their debt. That's not the point. When you raise interest rates 500 basis points in a little more than a year, what you've done to the business sector is totally alter the decision to embark on a major capital spending project because you're a CEO or CFO and you're doing the calculation of the say the a priori uh, expected return on investment benchmarked against your cost of capital. Well, that cost of capital just changed dramatically. So the impact this is gonna have on investment and then on employment, 
Uh, and then the impact is going to be on incomes. And that's really where the, where the impact of interest rates, it's not on debt service impairment. The debt service mm -hmm. impairment is going to come from what the interest rates do to investment and employment, and then what that does to cash flows. So all these people that say, oh, don't worry, everybody's locked in, they're not looking at the right element of where the interest rates impact the economy.